5h2. On est alpha. Trois ans de travail. Trois ans de travail. Vous vous rendez compte C'est malade. Complètement malade. Donc là, il nous reste quatre mois pour la bêta. Si on est aussi rigoureux, puis aussi bien organisé qu'on l'est, puis motivé comme on l'est pour, euh, pour l'alpha, on va livrer notre bêta comme du monde. So it's a very critical milestone for us and we reached it. So it's a very good news for us. Bien fraîche, s'il vous plaît. Bien fraîche. Ouais. Voilà, elle peut pas être plus fraîche que ça. Merci Alex. Merci. Cheers. Adam Jensen is the hero of the game. He's a, uh, he's a private security specialist working at a biotech firm. He's in his late 30s, uh, and he has a bit of a troubled past in that he was originally a member of the Detroit police force. He was one of the SWAT team members. And there's an incident in his past that uh, he was in control of a, a SWAT situation. He was given a direct order, which he did not agree with. And because he knew that it was wrong. He did not follow that order, and instead someone else did, and as he expected, the whole situation fell apart. He ended up being blamed, and he ended up quitting that job uh, because of the, the politics and everything around. So we're starting with this hero who's got this background. Uh, he's kind of needing to prove himself to the world. He gets hired by this biotech company, and one of the very first things that happens to him is while he is protecting the company, a group of black ops soldiers attack. Uh, and so from that point on, his quest is to go forward and discover who's done this and basically look for a redemption for himself. for the game was a lot of fun. Uh, we originally took it from the standpoint of the first thing we have to start with are scripts, uh, just audition scripts that won't actually be in the game. In the writing of these scripts, we it helped us to discover the characters themselves. Once we had the audition scripts, we went in and we uh, worked with another company, Wave Generation, to bring in a bunch of actors. And it's a, a lot of fun to sit in an audition uh, system and, and have actor after actor come in. A lot of times you find that they're nowhere near what you want. A lot of times you find, yes, that's the exact voice. And sometimes you'll get an actor to come in and perform the character in a way that you didn't expect that makes you go, wait a second, that's the character that I want. I never asked for this. If you want to make enemies, try and change something. The year is 2027. When I first uh, got the role, I knew about Deus Ex, but I had never played it. And I went back and played it, and I was like, this is great. I can see why this is so popular, because I, I had no idea the popularity of it. And um, the second, and I didn't say anything, but somehow people found out I was playing the role. And it was just email after email after email. And I just couldn't answer them. I just wouldn't answer them, because you know they wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't let me. But um, it started mounting, and the pressure started mounting, and I started thinking, man, I hope, I hope this is good. If I had known what it was before, not that I would have played it any differently, but I would have maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I would have bowed out or something, because <laughs> I would have been terrified. Breaking news. The riots continue in the streets of Detroit. Eliza is the newscaster. She is a very hologram-type uh, character. Um, she's... Em well, they say that she's emotionless, but she does have something for Adam. She does develop a kind of a, um, a warmth and a, a, she has a soft spot for Adam. He is badass. I love him. He's, uh, he's, he's like, as far as you can go being a bad guy, but still being a good guy. You know what I mean? The choice of doing a, a character in, thir in third person and also in first person was uh, actually to um, create a better connection between the player and his uh, on-screen character. So when you only see him in first person, you create a connection actually with the gun. You see that the, the, the gun is the, uh, the star of the show. But what we wanted to achieve is actually to have uh, the player see his own character sometimes when he goes into cover, when he does takedowns, when actually when he does 
cool stuff on sc on the screen. We wanted, we w really wanted to showcase the the main character, and this helps create a better connection with who you're playing. Who is this guy that you s that you always see? You always see his and his gun, but now you can actually see his face, see his reactions, see how he moves in the environment. So that was why we did that. And with all his augmentation, it's really awesome to see me mechanically how it's working. So uh, in the first person, it's not the same thing. You can you can try to do a takedown in first person, but you will never have the, the feeling that you will have if you have the full body action and everything. So this is why we, we well, it's to showcase, because uh, we have awesome modelers, so we need to showcase. We're not trying to go for photorealism. So because we're not trying to go for photorealism, it allows us to uh, change your proportions and stuff like that. It's not a I wouldn't say that we that they're caricatures. Uh, they're not like that, but obviously they're they're a simplified version, right, of the of the human bodies. Um, w one of the main reasons is actually I do believe as an art director that by just replicating exactly the human proportions on screen, uh, it, it often doesn't look all that good. The hands look really small. You know, you, you see them in cutscenes and games. The fingers look kind of broken and kind of flimsy and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, I think the eyes need to be bigger to see the emotion and have a wider range of animation, that kind of stuff. So we're really going into that. Uh, we're simplifying a lot of stuff. Like, we actually think that, you know, getting all the pores in the skin is, is, is not necessarily what's important. Because if, if, if the, the, the textures look really, really realistic, but yet the animation is still a bit, you know, like animations and games, I mean, as far as, as good as the animators are, it's, there's limitations, you know? And it, it, there's like a big clash between like, oh my god, look at the skin, it looks so real, but yet, it, you know, it moves kind of kind of like a robot. And we're trying to eliminate that by making them stylize a little, you know, the shoulders are bigger, the head's a little smaller, the hands are bigger. They, well, they look like comic book characters, basically, but I think done, done right. My name is Will Rosalini. I'm the CEO of Microtransponder. We're a medical device company developing wireless devices to interface with the nervous system. The idea of the $6 million man to enhance um, human capabilities is certainly out there. Military has, has been more focused on helping soldiers get better. Um, so for the DARPA project, a $6 million man, uh, uh, the, at last count, the arm cost $100 million. Um, so they have a host of projects working with uh, rehabilitating the warfighter, and it's in the orders of billions of dollars in treatment for other cognitive disorders like post-traumatic stress or anxiety or tinnitus, for example. The question is, well, what exactly does it mean to be human, which is one of the really interesting sort of subplots to this Deus Ex game is, okay, what does that mean to be a human and how does that, how does that interface with our way of dealing with the, the world outside of us? It's a prequel, it happens before nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is in the game, like meaning they, they do stuff with it, they just they don't know how to implant it in, in the body yet, you know, so it's gonna be using you know, objects and stuff like that, but not for augmentations. One of the early things that we said is that we don't wanna go the kinda, kinda old school way of drawing uh, uh, cybernetics and stuff like that, you know, kind of like the chromey metallic arms with like, you know, wires coming out of the chest, plug into the head, like it, it makes no sense at all. So I really didn't want to go for that. I wanted to, for something a little, you know, a little more subtle. The main thing was to actually generate a, a planned uncanniness, almost like a prosthetic. You know, when, we, when you look at a prosthetic, it doesn't look natural, but yet it's skin colored, that kind of stuff, and it kind of looks weird. So we're kind of aiming for that a bit. So you might have a, a, a guy that has a, a you know, a flesh-colored arm, but it's kind of bit, it's thinner, that kind of stuff. You know, it, it kind of bends in weird ways. Because um, obviously, if uh, if your arm is mechanical and it's stronger, it doesn't necessarily need to be bigger. I mean, it's just mechanical anyway, right? So we're trying to, like, get into that. I was very disappointed in some of the reviews, um, in, in part because they really just said, we're going to take a robot and put some human parts to it. And, and, and that's fine, but, but they could have done a lot more work. And, and a lot of credit goes to the Deus Ex team. When I showed up day one, they'd already read 10 times more than I would have expected. And over the last few years, they've become experts in and of themselves. And I think that kind of dedication to, to really to being scientifically valid in the sense that, yeah, this could happen, makes it much more interesting because it is closer to what could actually occur. And some of these movies that just put a big piece of uh, mechanical robotics up against some blood, that doesn't count. That doesn't count, you didn't think about it. And I think this team deserves a lot of credit for thinking through all those issues. Uh, really think that the, the augmentations, uh, what they will be able to do with the main character, Adam Jensen, that will be just crazy. So, uh, and I know that because we did a focus test and it was just, you know, a high level prototype, you know, and uh, or videos and they already say, okay, that's great. The idea that 
uh, the seven degrees of freedom that we currently have with our arms uh, is certainly limiting. And the way that the, the main character can manipulate, uh, I, I'm not sure how many degrees of freedom the developers will actually uh, program in, but, but we're talking on the orders of 20, 30 degrees of freedom. That creates a whole different way of doing karate, doing self-defense, and doing attack moves that, that's really interesting. They did a great job with it. Um, and so that's what I'm most excited to see because I, I don't think any game has ever come close to delivering that type of uh, gameplay. It's really fun to have those augmentations, uh, but at the same time, it's it's something that we have to uh, we have to find cool ways to use them, and it's a pretty good challenge, I think. Yeah, we we try a lot of stuff like uh, Muay Thai, uh, <laughs> combat, uh, capoeira. capoeira. Oh yeah, and and well, street kind of fighting stuff but I think that we're going uh, to the well story wise he's a uh, an old Navy or a SWAT leader or something like that so so uh, we decide to have something more military and, and, and like quick straight to the point straight to the point it's not like you can just easily walk in a convenience store and just buy something obviously so it's not gonna be extremely widespread but it is there uh, we're going into extreme details really like for as far as the hero is concerned and the boss is like really into the mechanics and you see the things open and you 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 really see how they work and how they behave and I think I think that's I'm not sure that's ever been seen in game really that kind of attention to detail to mechanical parts and how they move and transform and it was a cool opportunity to actually get to we're AI specialists but then to get to work on a very special boss battles are special moments so two challenges we had to take our tech and inject it into the DX3 engine that was it and then I think within DX3 itself is that again you're coming at it and you could be anybody right you could have this augmentation that augmentation this weapon and so balancing all this stuff you don't know a priori what the guy is coming into the game and you want to give him a great experience you know you want to be true to the designer's vision but you want to give the player a great experience so the balancing that was brutally hard the human claymore basically is is exactly that it's you know you take how claymore functions and it's it's incorporated into uh, 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 the hero it's actually an augmentation that you can go out and buy uh, and it's something that you can use when you're surrounded by enemies, you know, kind of like a last resort type of thing, and you trigger it, and he's got all those little latches that open in his body, and, and, and he literally, like, you know, ejects thousands of metal beads, and uh, he just goes into slow motion, and you see the enemies flying up in the air, and all that kind of stuff, very, very cool effect. I think people are dangerous, um, I mean, so technology, uh, technology is, is simply a tool, and, and I think that, that people are dangerous or not dangerous. And it's, it, it'd be very difficult to, in fact, impossible to stop the flow of technology. Um, you're gonna get black market development regardless. So as an economist, first and foremost, I would argue that there's no need to stop any technology because the free market will take care of it. That said, there are controls in place that, that I think that we all could work on with, with clinical trials, with FDA, um, regulation of medical and, and drug products that, that is an ongoing battle to, to make sure that there is a balance between aggressive development and marketing and safety of the of the patient. We uh, launched the, the trailer, uh, the CGI trailer on the internet uh, one, pr one week prior to the E3 and the response was quite uh, absurd. Uh, we had, uh, I think, 2.5 million views in one week, uh, which is uh, quite enormous. This really created a buzz, a momentum for the, the, the code demo that we have shown to the, to, the, to the public. It was a labor of love of uh, over nine, 10 months, and it was very intense. It was the first project that people from Visual Works, which is the studio of CGI of uh, Square Enix, it was the first time they worked on something else than the portfolio, the traditional portfolio of uh, Square Enix. So uh, we had, I think, the team of, uh, of uh, Final Fantasy working on this, and they completely uh, understood what we wanted to do, and the quality standard has been totally awesome. You'll never find them! I'll never stop looking. Uh, we worked three years before uh, before showing our work to the, the journalists and the public and everything. And we uh, we showed the, 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 the demo uh, to uh, 600 journalists in three days and, and the feedback is just great. So I'm very happy for the team. And what I'm really happy about is the uh, full reaction of all the territories. 
not only uh, the North American media, but the European media is completely gaga. And uh, we have also, obviously, our friends from Japan that have really looked at it very seriously, and they want to do a big launch in Japan. So that's a great news. When people come out of the demo and the trailer, they say, when is the movie coming out? <laughs> so now we have just a game to do. Uh, now, so that comment is very important for us, because this means people have uh, emotionally bonded already to the game, and they want to see more of it, uh, which is a great sign. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it and enjoy the rest of the show. We were supposed to take the E3 demo and to add a couple of things, the UI and some other things, but these guys are so, um, they want to show the uh, evolution to, to the media to show the, uh, the depth of the game. And I think David and his crew decided um, very late in the game to, uh, to explore a new avenue for a new demo. And the demo that they chose really did hit the spot because... Uh, they Actually, this demo was, uh, was chosen uh, roughly a month before it was come. <laughs> And, and that's no joke. And, and the real story is that we were. Uh, it is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it is a joke, but we did it anyway. <laughs> but uh, we were talking with the marketing guys, and they were saying, "Yeah, maybe something new. Do you think you could show something else?" And we were crazy enough to say, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's almost as if this okay. Like, it looks like a like a great game. You know, it looks like a triple A, and, and things are there. But the, the the real Deus Ex answers were not fully answered yet. So it was like, yeah, okay, you guys are, are seems to be on a, on a good way to make a great game. But Gamescom was really cool. We saw it was supposed to be a great game. Now we see it's a it's a Deus Ex. You know, the multi path is there. All the promises have been answered. Warren Spector uh, was at Gamescom. He was giving a, a, a conference at the GDC of Europe, and uh, David told me you should, you know, text him to to invite him to a private session. So I said, yeah, good idea. So I did, as I, I do some at main, main events, but he doesn't answer. But sometimes he shows up, and to our big surprise, he comes through the uh, Square Enix uh, booth around in the middle of afternoon, saying. I would like to come and see it because he never saw code. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did organize that uh, after the event uh, at 6.30, uh, 7, 7 p.m., a uh, private screening. And it was quite special. I mean, we were in our demo booth. All of our guys were here and showing the third installment of the game that the father, you know, the, 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 the spiritual father was there. And uh, I think we took a lot of pictures. And uh, I remember one quote he said. He said, uh, it really looks and sounds like a true Deus Ex. <coughs> and for me, that was, that was sufficient. You're gonna love Hengsha. Twice the scum and half the space. Call me if you need any backup. There's a nightclub in this sector called The Hive. If our hacker went to ground here, chances are the owner will know. These guys, first of all, they came because they came to their new studio. They left behind jobs that were incredibly uh, interesting, working for very good companies on very good franchises. But these guys left everything. What have we done? <laughs> <laughs> but these guys left everything to come to a brand new studio with n not even uh, uh, permanent offices yet. And but it, they had this passion, deep, deep passion and I think for all of us it's 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 the project of our life yeah. and and we want is this to be our signature and uh, once you start with that and you do you work hard you have good support you have a good team and after three years and a half yeah. if, if things are not so uh, so bad the results will be there yeah. I, I think it's it's exactly that um, 
I think really is it a great game or not? I, I think it's not up to us to say this at all. I think it's it's not it's not our business. I think it's it'll be the players and, and all that. But what I think it was really that it's it's a major major endeavor of passion. Like the journalists, like they come here. Like we have like journalists that have been in the business for 20 years, right? And and they come here and they tell us stuff like, man, I haven't felt that in like 10 years. Like the kind of spirit there is here, the kind of energy. Um, they're really like there's really something going on. Um, how much is that in the game? I hope, I think, I think that passion is in the game, definitely. Will that make a good game? Like I said, that's not, I don't, I don't think that's really, I think we have a great product, but I mean, it's, it's a, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's really a work of, of passion and, and, and a work of, um, of uh, I think like really, really smart people that like are really freaking structured, organized and stuff like that. And yeah, that, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, it's a great team. And you know, we've been told that the games come, right? They, they were looking at all the pictures of, um, of all the different teams of different dev teams and then when they got to our picture the journalist was like man it's like i couldn't put my finger on it at the beginning but it's like there's something about you guys and he realized your picture you guys are all kind of laughing and goofing around and and, 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 and and i think that's 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 what it is really it's a goofy game <laughs> Cut. if you want to make enemies try to change something